It's bad. Enemy. Hello, everybody. My name's John. And my name's Rob. And this is Bad Anime, the podcast where we decide, is, is this, this anime, anime bad? bad? All right. Well, well, today, uh, <laughs> today, <laughs> it's usually just us. It's usually just me and Rob over here. We don't have many other friends. We don't. But, you know, we found one. Because you know what's better than a twosome, Rob? What? Obviously, it's a threesome. Oh, I, oh uh, okay. I thought you were going somewhere else with that. Anyway. <laughs> Well, we got our friend Mike Gagino here. So, Mike, how you doing? How you doing, buddy? I'm good. It's really great to be on the pod. Yeah. It's great to have you. I've admired it from afar for so long, and now it's so great to be right up in it, you know? <laughs> You're going to be very close up in it, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be like a headfirst yes. dive, especially what we're watching today. This is, gonna, <laughs> this is headfirst, and I freaking love it. I feel like this is like a super intellectual movie for... Or bad anime. <laughs> oh, oh! No matter. Usually on this show, no matter how intellectual something is, we we quickly make it not very intellectual. So. <laughs> <laughs> or less. Well, we do have the habit of getting very analytical with topics that usually don't deserve it. So yeah, <laughs> it's a fifty-fifty yeah. here. I exactly. don't know how this is gonna go. Yeah, I don't. So we're I just don't gonna free ball and see where we're going. Yeah, and uh, Mike, tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself before we get started, because you know I know you. Rob knows you now. Uh, tell, tell us a bit about yourself or tell our peeps a little bit about yourself. Um, well, peeps out there in the bad anime world, uh, <laughs> I'm, um, I'm a sound engineer, a musician. Uh, I've I started this, the podcast network, the up in your ear podcast network, Woo. Woo. um, that your uh, the, the show is on. Um, I do a podcast called, does it suck now? Uh, with, uh, my three other friends about just old movies and whether they do in fact suck now uh because when you're a kid you like movies and they don't suck but when you watch them as an adult uh, a lot of times like your feelings can change over the years oh um, nature and so, time just do that to us all they do so this is a this is really cool because our podcast uh did princess mononoke it was a suggestion from uh jay bone who i've been friends with since i was four Amazing. So we we like to pick movies that we really love or loved mm. mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, offer them up to the altar of criticism. <laughs> uh, and uh, we did Princess Mononoke um, and it was like a really fun discussion. But it this is really cool that we get to do a crossover here because you guys are all about anime. Uh, and I think this might be interesting because like I'm very much a like a tourist in the world of anime mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. like i That's know a good way the to major put it. You know, i've never I, heard I know the major words that terms before but i love that <laughs> i mean i know like i know the major works i know right. like enough about it but like i haven't like i'm not deep in it to it like you guys mm -hmm. like i don't even know if i've gotten like the stuff i watch i don't even know if it is the bad stuff or the good stuff right. i just know like <laughs> people it's like you gotta watch like whatever ghost in the shell mm. or sailor moon or whatever the people suggest mike it's okay sometimes we don't even know and that's fine <laughs> yeah depending on uh, what topic we're covering is it bad is it good it's a it's a, such a relative question wait that's what yeah, we learned but... while doing the show for a year now we're like wait what the hell is this anime thing all about yeah I, i'm just glad that our that our podcasts have very very similar themes yes <laughs> because, mm -hmm. because when you think about it it's so funny when we joined the network because i checked out your, your guys's podcasts and uh does it suck now i was like oh that's basically what we do <laughs> yeah. yeah we does have for for older um, for some re really critically acclaimed titles be, whether it be animated movies or film Instead of asking ourselves, is it bad, me and Bouncy before, I call John Bouncy, by the way. I've just been doing that my entire <laughs> yeah. life. Okay, me, I like that nickname. Yeah, but me and Bouncy, we, the question sometimes we'll ask, like, does this hold up? So essentially, mm -hmm. yep, does it suck now is the underlying yeah. question there. Yeah, it's Pretty like much. the same idea. It's the same idea. We've done that for only a few uh, mm -hmm. a, a few different titles now. Uh, Bouncy, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we've done yeah. it like three or four times. Yeah, we've done it like three or four times for like Evangelion, Gurren Lagann, and also like mm -hmm. if you guys ever do Akira, hit us up because that that seems very in the wheelhouse as well. Oh yeah, very like, much. I feel easier. like that could be on the horizon. So my brother is is uh, he's very he's much more into anime and mm. animation than I think any of us on the pod and in 
a lot of what I've discovered over the years is through him, whether oh, okay. it's like Attack on Titan or, or just like stuff that I think is is cool. He'll kind of just be like you, you know, or Cowboy and Bebop or something. He'll be mm-hmm. like, you know, you'll he'll, he'll be like, this is OK for you. You'll like, like <laughs> this. Is this. <okay. laughs> yeah. So or your brother was essentially death, acting death as the was one. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You just get yeah, like he, a trickle down effect from your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He like goes through. Uh, the an- he like he takes it uh, all the bad anime for me, so <laughs> I have to watch it, all of it. You can't run for long, Mike. We've got it, you it, now. It sounds like what Mike. It sounds like what your brother does for you is what we're doing to everybody listening to the show. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have him on. Actually, he would be he would be a great oh, like, absolutely a great guest. Why not? I mean, the, you're you're our first guest that we've actually ever had on this podcast. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of breaking the seal in a little bit. Breaking that oh. seal, baby. Yeah. Nice. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. Boom. I have water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You you know, we should actually get you guys on our podcast as well, and you should pick a movie as well. It doesn't have to be Ooh. anime. It can just be anything. Ooh. It'd be so nice to the- talk about talk about something not anime for a change. I might crumble <laughs> and start and I might cry a little bit, Mike, but I think after the initial shock, I'll be okay. Just I don't think I would know what humans. to do. <laughs> <laughs> do they make where, movies where like are the that? the school girls? It's like, I'm, 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 wrong show. <laughs> wrong Why are everybody's eyes school so girls. small instead of large and blue? <laughs> yeah. Like like their because if they were green, up, if, if they, they were green, they would die. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, oh, God. Wow. Uh, well, uh, should we get to our subject at hand? Uh, Mike, sure. um, I, I want to know a little bit about, because uh, the, the reason that we are doing princess mononoke today is because you texted me and you were like hey can i get a sound bit <laughs> for princess mononoke from you guys and i was like neither of us have ever seen it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really i'm actually surprised mm. so until you texted me like rob or i neither of us have watched it i think i watched it like 10 to 15 years ago with my like mm-hmm. small weeb friends okay uh but i i didn't remember like anything about it other than interesting big wolf go gur uh yeah so <laughs> claire dames yeah so this um, time it was good for rob and i to kind of jump in because this is also our first ghibli title that we've covered on the show so i'm really excited that okay. you brought it up yeah maybe you know more about that like the studio than me because we because basically this is like um mm-hmm. i feel like this is like one of those movies where it's like uh more of a prestige movie as mm. far as like i don't know i don't know if if it's gonna like i mean I, I n- maybe not be on the radar is the wrong way to put it but mm. it's like i feel like real anime heads are probably just gonna be like yeah that movie's cool or it's not it doesn't mm-hmm. have like a a following like a lot of anime does mm. where it's like this mm. is the movie that like maybe your parents saw and we're like hey you like anime i like like princess mononoke that was like really cool it had some like interesting things about environmentalism to say or something yeah. you know it's mm-hmm. like um i mean i don't know what are your feelings on it like how like i think you could you can definitely call it anime but are you like what is this to like real anime fans you know um this is it's hard to generalize but i if i can give you the broadest generalization possible is um unfortunately when you talk about mononoke or a lot of any of the other studio ghibli works um Mm -hmm. the director uh, ahayo miyazaki becomes directly involved in that conversation and Mm -hmm. miyazaki is one of those guys um how do i put this um he's a notorious dick and a lot of anime fans don't like <laughs> it's one of those things fair <laughs> we're like especially in modern times people have a very hard time separating the creator from the art itself and taking right. that person mm-hmm. out of the equation mind you to my knowledge miyazaki never had any scandal of any description or ne- he never did anything bad he was just an or just a huge asshole like <laughs> i remember there was a very famous story of uh because his son was also a director uh, his son's name escapes escapes me at the moment also went into animation and apparently <laughs> apparently miyazaki walked out halfway through of his own son of the premiere of his son's first film had a cigarette and just left the cinema because he thought it sucked oh my god <laughs> so damn. people just think miyazaki's a dick um i kind of like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, I, he's I, an I interesting that. character and yes. it, it becomes a difficult conversation when you talk a lot about a lot about Ghibli stuff. And I think yeah. because in the anime community at large, 
because it started off as a niche thing, you still yeah. have a little bit of that hipster mentality going on where people are like are mad at things being too mainstream. And right. all the G- Ghibli and Miyazaki stuff had, out of a lot of anime titles, generally speaking, it had the biggest Western crossover. This and stuff like Spirited Away, My Name right. Totoro, Kiki's right. Delivery mm-hmm. Service, Ponyo. House Moving Castle. Yes, all that exactly. Stuff. stuff that got was readily released in the U.S. So I think that's part of it, too, where some anime fans now are kind of reconsidering Ghibli. So, or some of them just say, eh, it's overrated, don't watch it. Which is, I, I honestly, becoming an anime fan in like the early 2010s, a very late 2000s, that was the opinion, overwhelming opinion I got from um, anime fans at the time, those damned dirty weebs in the meantime, is that like, <laughs> don't watch Ghibli stuff, you're wasting your time. So I never mm-hmm. really checked it out. Have I ever seen any Ghibli stuff? I've, I know I've seen clips of stuff here and there. And for Spirited Away, I can't tell if I actually just saw bits and pieces of it or yeah. if I actually saw the whole thing or it's funny the weird third option I, where like uh, people have told you all about the movie in your entire life. So you feel like you've seen it. So, it's funny yeah. because I have the same exact experience with Spirited Away. Yeah. I feel like it's that movie that everybody that knows anime anything or even people that haven't seen anime and are just like film buffs have seen. Spirited but Away, yeah. I have just seen so many random bits and pieces and previews on Toonami that <laughs> <laughs> I just I just never got like... I don't think I ever watched it, but I, I I have dabbled in a few Ghibli stuff. But kind of going off what you were saying, Rob, I feel like mm. the Studio Ghibli mentality for a lot of people, for maybe like hardcore anime people, could be mm-hmm. more of like a, oh, yeah, like they're cool. They're overrated. So, Mike, I think mm-hmm. you were a little bit on the money with that. Yes. But also, to some extent, for people that are like anime adjacent, like I, I used to call myself pretty anime adjacent. Like I wasn't mm. really in right. the community until we started this podcast and i i feel like sometimes that i'm still not with certain things and trends and i'm catching up i got a lot to catch up on uh rob's helping with that but honestly about to get to interject right there and cut you off like an asshole i'm gonna say i think you're a little more in the community now than i am honestly you mean like a miyazaki <laughs> oh see i'm just getting in Quit being a dick like miyazaki <laughs> quick, quick miyazaki me rob <laughs> No, Just but stop. I think you're you're kind of like hitting on something where I'm like kind of what I was getting at because mm. like, you know, being a musician my whole life, it's like when you get into like a genre of music, there's always like the popular music that right. people just go like, uh, whatever, that's crap. Yeah, or, of you know, it's like right. I like punk, but like I'm not into like Green Day or whatever, Blink-182. Right. I like mm-hmm. like the underground shit. Right. Uh, but right. This um, is like this is like in punk yeah. terms. This is like the clash. Like this is like the a clash. This is a big deal. Like it's a big yep. deal. Everybody mm-hmm. knows about it. And I feel like people that aren't hardcore, hardcore anime fans or hardcore weebin mm-hmm. are kind of like, oh, those movies are great. Like I feel like people yeah. just on the periphery love these movies and think mm-hmm. they're fantastic. Like I like I don't know if we can get into like my evaluation or like whatever review of the movie. Oh yeah. It was like I felt like it was a little cheesy. <laughs> or i don't know maybe a little is the wrong word uh, maybe i meant a lot <laughs> it's like it's like very like on the nose yes uh, the metaphors are, are like clunky um you know the allegory is just like he just like bashes you over the head with like this allegory yes and and you know i think i remember like like in the context of our podcast um we like to talk about when we first saw it as opposed to now when we're Mm -hmm. watching it. Mm -hmm. So when I first saw this, I was like a stone college kid, like 20 years old. (laughs) And my buddy had like a a video cassette of this and we'd watch it, you know, maybe once a week. Um, (laughs) Once a week. You know, you you, like, so So so, you've seen this many times then. uh, Yeah. But like I watched it a lot and then didn't watch it for like 20 years and Mm -hmm. forgot all about it. And then watched it again for this podcast. Wow. Oh, wow. But, that's a so story. If, I mean, for your younger listeners, you may not like I went to college like 20 years ago and we had a, a VHS player. Right. And we just had a stack of VHS tapes, which was like, I mean, there was movies that we watched pretty much all of them at least once a week. Right. Just like skate videos, movies, like mm, yeah, TV yeah. compilations. So it's just like certain things I can like I will see them and I will know every like, you know, bit of dialogue mm-hmm. or something like that. And this was a movie that was like that. But. I, I felt like it was a lot more profound when I was 20 as opposed to mm-hmm. like now when I'm in my 40s. It's like 
I'm watching this and I'm just like, you know, he could be a little more subtle yep. about his, <laughs> like, you know, he can make us like dig a little more, like, you know, peel back the onion just a little bit. He's just like, nature. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There is a forest Look green. out, nature. <laughs> nature, look out. They're going to get you. <laughs> They're after you, nature. It's the spirit of the forest. <laughs> oh, no. The white scoop. <laughs> Oh my God, that's his vo- that's the voice. Yeah. <laughs> it's so like, good. That we goofy gotta save forest the spirit monster. of the forest. <laughs> Scooby. Oh, the, the um seeing the like when the when the spirit of the forest becomes like that weird goofy deer. Oh I, yeah. I had to pause the movie because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> at the, like because that face kind of turns at you the first time and it's like, <laughs> like that face <laughs> was so dumb. <laughs> I just like lost it. I was like, how do we think this was so profound? Like when I was a kid, we were just like, yeah, man, env- we got to save the environment, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you were also like, w- did you mention that you were also high watching this in your 20s? Because like if you yeah, didn't like mostly. that. Yeah. OK, that uh, that also tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely saw this movie once on mushrooms. Bro, like that's my- so correct, my guy. Like <laughs> we got to we got to yeah. stop chopping those trees for wood and start <laughs> using them, man. I hate all things iron. <laughs> all things iron Yo, oh man iron yeah town. we would have those conversations because like i was a philosophy major oh okay. actually my roommate was also a philosophy major and and you know oh and my other roommate was a psychology major mm-hmm. and we just sit there just being like man like what do you think like the boars represent they're like what, what you know <laughs> it's like who cares nothing yeah. probably <laughs> they're just they're just boars Angry pigs yeah <laughs> Yeah, We're angry pigs. I mean, it, it it did have quite a level of cheese to it, and I'm I'm not sure if I can mm-hmm. chalk that up because I I don't think I've ever once watched this. Uh, even like maybe the now the two times I've probably seen it, I don't think mm-hmm. either of those t- those times I watched it uh, with subtitles. I've I've watched it with dubs, um, and this movie weirdly has a very good voice cast, but everything just sounds mm-hmm. a little cheesy coming from everybody in this movie i feel like maybe that's my my big pitfall with with the whole movie so, is that um, uh, is it's the weird script, with the um, cheesiness thing yeah is the script like uh like translated from like japanese into english yes. is it is yeah. like one of those things because like i feel that like, yeah yes. right yeah it came yep. across yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah it came across fairly well and i wonder how much you see when it comes to the direction of a lot of these actors because these are i mean my goodness, I mean, I saw Billy Bob Thornton was um, the voice of uh, Jigo in it. And yeah. then you had, um, funny enough, I think it was, uh, I forget I forget how to pronounce his name. I think it's Joe D'Amato, the voice of Bender mm-hmm. from Futurama. He was yeah. voicing, oh, yeah. uh, he was voicing uh, the guard. Uh, the, yeah, like, Gonzo. The primary, yeah, behind. Um, Gonzo, he, which is definitely not the name of a porn site, probably. Oh, uh, t- I don't even know what <laughs> porn is. I gonza. never heard of it. <laughs> it's a feminine gonz. <laughs> yeah, gonza. Gonza. <laughs> that's that's the uh, that's the adult entertainment made exclusively for ladies, and it's just talking. <laughs> you gonza. mean like this right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what we're doing? I don't know. That was our biggest appeal in group. Well, well, I'm incredible. Well, no, it's a like lot a, today. It's just like a Hallmark movie, but people take their shirt off. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just 25 yeah. straight minutes of declaring undying love with her shirt off so you're yeah. telling me it's just cologne ads basically yeah yep. it's just finding out he's into you and then he takes his shirt off and it's over yeah yeah <laughs> that's right that's that's the way one taste i'm sorry i shouldn't say that i know I, I like hey i'm a feminist i know like women like that you know like sex <laughs> I want to just put that out there. <laughs> Don't if want can, this to be used against me later. That is some that is some breaking news right now. Yeah. Actually, I guys, can Michael Gugino thinks women you know, we don't joke. like sex. <laughs> you know, we kid, but women do like sex, okay? And you blew if my that mind. was a, and if that was a message of this movie, we would have gotten it immediately. <laughs> Because they love to yell out the message of this movie yeah. consistently. Well, when it comes actually to fem like to um feminism for a little bit, there was one of the minor mm. themes was actually yes. female empowerment in this. That's right. Oh yeah. Lady yeah. Boshi um running what's called like um Iron Town. And mm-hmm. 
and I love how in the beginning one positive one very positive note I do have is when um they never at least in the beginning they didn't really go out of their way to portray the people in Iron Town as bad people, especially mm-hmm. the woman far from it. And right. this going back to I want to go bring this back to the cheesiness a little bit because there was a little incongruity here between the visual sometimes and the subject matter because a lot of Miyazaki stuff, a lot of Ghibli stuff is kind of it's not sound so condescending, but I have no better word. It's very twee. It's really pretty, usually cutesy. But then, mm-hmm. like, our main um, character, um, Bouncing Helmet, or Bouncing, what would they make? Ashitaka. Ashitaka, yeah, thank Ashitaka. you. Ashitaka. Yes. Ashitaka. Well, after he gets um, demonized, he gets the demon curse from this boar. Um, he's dismembering people. He is shooting arrows and knocking people's heads off. So as I'm watching this, because it's not gory the way it's presented, but it is violent enough. So just the imagery with that takes me, hits me a little bit. Like, okay, we're getting way more violent than I thought we would. Cool. Mm-hmm. And then we eventually, he, he makes his way over to this Iron Town place, which is run by a woman. And this kind of hits me because uh, I read, actually, I think I read uh, some snippets from interviews with the voice cast here. And the voice actress for Lady Eboshi said, it was kind of cool to have a woman in that role advocating for humankind in terms of like technological achievement, greed, right. profiteering, yeah, very, driver, a very yeah. pro industry female character, which at the time I don't remember a lot of. Yeah. So as we were talking about feminism, I just went quiet. I'm like, this is relevant. What the hell is going on no. here? <laughs> we have it, stumbled. Oh, yeah, something. totally. No, that's a great point. <laughs> it is because like, especially like the women of Iron Town are the ones defending Iron Town. Uh, and again, I have to bring half. this up because right. they, they could just casually mention like, yeah, we all used to work at the brothel. So it's like, wait, what did you what used do to do? You mean? <laughs> yeah. Do you, no, do no, you I, see I, I how like this that. looks? Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought that, that Lady Eboshi and Iron Town was probably like, for me, the best part of or, or like the best characters of it. Because mm-hmm. it's like because uh, he sort of like hits this gray area. Where yes. where here they are, like you're rooting for them. Like they're these women, they 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 worked in a brothel, like she is like this incredibly driven woman who's like done mm-hmm. all this good for the people of Iron Town. And it's like obviously like a caring leader of this place. Mm-hmm. Um and like, you know, technologically advanced and like like being a woman in this sort of like we assume it's like the old world where everything is very misogynistic yep. but but you see like her walk the line of being um good and bad whereas like a lot of the mm-hmm. characters were not that you know well like sort of well fleshed out it was just You're like right. yeah. you know where you look at billy bob thornton's character who, who <laughs> actually i really loved as uh, his character as well but um like there's a point where you just realize he's bad, and then it's he sort of like gets less interesting, you know? Yeah, you're right. Lady Eboshi's character was, I think, the most three sixty three dimensional character of the entire thing because you know she had that one scene. They really went out of their way to give her scenes to make her seem more humanized. Like she had that mm-hmm. one scene yeah. where she has this entire commune of lepers that she's yeah. like most people would just kill or uh, get rid of from their community or yeah, you know, easily dispose of tell them to leave town and yet she has them doing things for her and they're all very indebted to her for you know not killing them <laughs> and it's right. one of the crazy things right because she's doing that very good thing very charitable thing but at the same time they're building her guns yeah so <laughs> yeah it's very morally gray i really like that. your point i find that so interesting where they're not really giving you a hundred percent is she a good or bad person and even towards the very end of the movie we're like I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just yeah, didn't know, you know if I liked her or not the entire so movie. So when, you know, there's that part, and this is this is like the part of the movie that I really liked, like when she actually gets to the point where she's going to like kill the forest god or, you know, forest mm-hmm. spirit, there's like, there's a sense that she's not like all evil, all bad or all good. Like her motives for doing that, you feel like part of that is that she was like duped into this or that she feels like she needs to do something to like prove herself as a woman in the world. Mm -hmm. So there's like all of this subtext on top of her doing this thing that we all see as terrible, but it's not like so cut and dry to to the audience. And to go off You can empathize with her. To go off that, speaking of cut and dry, Literally, mm. the main characters are the most cut and dry oh, characters. God. I think I've, oh my God. The, oh. like, 
I gotta say, like, uh, San, her entire thing is like, I like yeah. woods. Wolves are nice. Uh, and <laughs> also, we have I am a freaking, wolf. Oh, I am a wolf. <laughs> and, and like, you're yes. not, though. <laughs> but, but, and then, but I think my big point here is Ashitaka, because I want, I would like to get mm. your thoughts on him as a character, because Rob, I think you hit on it earlier, or Mike, either one of you, you're both great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank but you. like somebody hit on this earlier where Ashitaka, you know, like fights that like worm bore early on and like gets infected mm -hmm. with this thing. And then once he has this thing, he has this like holy jack off arm where he like now <laughs> right. is able to just kill everything with his like jack off arm. But then Fuck. he but I, I'm like, OK, so first he gets infected with this thing. Then his entire society tells him, hey, man you can't be here anymore even though eight generations of man buns before you have been leading this village so you got to get out and we're going to take your man bun so they cut his man bun sent him on his way and then he has to go out and then then he's also murdering people but at no point does anything bother him i have right in my notes here damn nothing seems to bother this motherfucker he just Not like at all. is stagnant the entire time committing mass acts of murder like nothing is going on going to different towns meeting people he shows barely an inch of emotion throughout to, this entire movie to pop to pop our longtime listeners at bouncy this one's for you he's basically rio from um <laughs> spirit chronicles some spirit chronicles yes mike spirit chronicles is a show we've covered oh, twice now and God. we keep we keep mentioning it or i keep mentioning it like at least every mm -hmm. three to five episodes i have to bring it up again because it's always relevant <laughs> and and I see and that actually reminds me a lot of a uh, because Mike when we're talking about like the legacy of this film I yeah this is my first time seeing this but I've seen so much I've seen a lot of the influence it carried afterwards because I mm -hmm. a lot of times I'm as like as the film progresses I see I I'm reminded of a lot of both Japanese and Western entertainment and a lot of them was like huh and now I see where the influence from cutting off the man bun reminded me of a scene from the american tv show um avatar the last airbender yeah totally where cut oh, off yeah. you know where zuko chops off the bun and i'm just rem and i'm just pleasantly reminded i was reminded of a lot of films while watching this but obviously this was the progenitor of, of so many of those ideas so immediately well, are you guys covering like you guys don't have a cutoff for like when when you nope. look at anime so like you're actually looking at like what films came out in the in the wake of this I'm, I'm looking was, a lot. Was yeah. this? Does this? Did this have like a huge? Was like a like a splash in the anime pond, and like everybody sort of like wanted to to make their kind of masterpiece, or was influenced by by this? I think there's influence there. I don't think there's as many like exact connections. Like I don't think you'll find mm -hmm. another ver anime version movie of Princess Mononoke that somebody yeah. was like, let me try. But what I, what I think, Rob, what you're saying is you can see the seeds of this in other yeah, things. See, kind exactly, of the seeds. And because and um, um, I was reading, uh, people have found this movie phenomenally influential. So I can see so many creators taking um, ideas from this movie. Um, yeah. Mononoke, generally, it's legacy. Um, I think it's a tiny bit overshadowed and it's become kind of um i guess you could the, the best comparison i can make is when you just talk about the um different eras of disney films how they all came out very succinctly and everyone has a favorite so to speak but it, it's not as like one of them is more impactful than the other like you know because when you say think like when for example when you talk about the disney renaissance you usually talk about lion king little mermaid and films like that in one block much mm -hmm. less as individual films, if you know what I'm getting mm -hmm. at. Yeah. And Mononoke, I feel like, is one of the premier examples of, of Ghibli films, but it's always talked about in the context of other Ghibli films. To like Spirited question, Away like how, or something. Exactly. I always feel like Spirited Away is like the one that yes. is referred to more than Princess. I feel yes. like this is... This is I don't know, I want to say it's like a minor work, but it's always like in the shadow. Of no, that. you're right. Yes. I think you'd be correct. It's more of like a middle child. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Because like there are some other works that are just have, for whatever reason, uh, just stood out more yeah. and just been like, when you think of Ghibli movies, like I feel like you instantly go to Spirited Away or like My Neighbor Totoro. Like you don't really think about, because mm -hmm. I, I even, when you brought it up, Mike, like I even had to look it up to see if it was a Ghibli film because I was like, I feel like that's a Ghibli film, but I just don't know if it is or not. Mm -hmm. I obviously knew of it, but that's that's the thing in your brain. I feel like there's not like an easy synapse there with this movie as there is with Spirited Away. Oh, that's, that's Studio Ghibli, right? Yeah, and I guess that's why like I, 
I keep asking these questions of like, mm-hmm. what, where is Princess Mononoke in like the canon of anime? As far as like, you know, so like you have your early stuff or mm-hmm. whatever, I guess, which is like 80s is, is probably the beginning uh, Probably anime. Uh, for mm-hmm. early anime, it'd be like uh, uh, early 70s, late 60s yeah. is when anime really started to become a foothold in Japan. Um, 80s. I started watching mm-hmm. it in, in probably in the 80s as a kid. Yep. Yeah, 80s like, was a gr- I mean, I guess like Voltron and like, mm-hmm. what was the one with the battleship that was in space? Space Battleship Yamato? <laughs> Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that was space fucking awesome. Space battleship. <laughs> like, yeah, What's the one with the space? The battleship space, in space. Oh, with, space battleship with yeah. Yamato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I mean, mm-hmm. I definitely had my introduction to that in the eighties, and this yeah. feels very, d- very different from that. Oh, um, anime kind of goes in. Uh, if I can, I'm gonna try to be as succinct as possible. Too late. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> anime kind of goes. I feel like you can break it up very easily into decades. And um, what anime tackled in various decades changed. For example, this was 97. And yeah. 97 was a hotbed year for a lot of anime because um, it was starting uh, towards like the mid early to mid-90s. People stopped taking it seriously because there was such a boom in the 80s. And unfortunately, there was a lot of really low quality works that flooded the market by the mm-hmm. late 80s. So by... The mid nineties, people were scrambling. It's like, hey, let's let's remind people that this medium, this art form, can be so dope. Um, one of my favorite films to ever come out, it was the it was the uh, cinematic finale to Neon Genesis Evangelion, which is my favorite anime TV series of all time. The end of Evangelion, the film, came out in ninety seven. So I can only imagine being a Japanese moviegoer in ninety seven, seeing this end of, end, of, end of Evangelion. Being very happy and being very sad, depending on which mm-hmm. film you saw. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think that what you're 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 right, and I, mm. I think that what what it is, I, I think, is that this came at a very interesting time. This movie in '97, because so many other impactful releases were coming out in the late '90s, especially in like anime from other developers and other studios. Mm-hmm. Because My Never Totoro came out in '88, and I feel like Totoro really kicked off that wave of Ghibli, and right. that continued for a while, and then. The late 90s, everybody was coming out with shit. And then you get to the early 2000s, and that's when, like, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle came out. Um, and those, I feel like, really kind of blew the roof off after the after it kind of dipped back down. So maybe this just came at a bad time, I guess. <laughs> could be. Well, no, honestly, the, like to, what to, you're saying. To, to, um, for a very simple answer, it could be. You guys are but I can, it was weird because the art style of this actually reminded me a lot more, I should say, more of the character designs because Miyazaki... Mm-hmm. You know, he was born in the 40s, so a lot of his favorite manga and anime was coming out in, like, the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. And these characters look like they were drawn in the 60s or 70s, but the way they moved and animated, I can tell this is in the 90s. And I, my original guess is 95, but then I saw 97, I'm like, damn it, I was so close. <laughs> so that was, just, that was a little bit of insults to my pride there. Mm-hmm. But this is really cool, like that you guys are like giving me context for this movie. Yeah. Cause like watching this, this movie feels like the way you're describing it in in a lot of ways, like a movie that is for people who don't aren't like don't watch anime. Yes. This is like yes. we got like Winnie Driver and Billy Bob Thornton and yeah. you know all the, right. and you know, all those people that you know of and mm-hmm. they're in this cartoon and it's not like a cartoon cartoon. It's like that's for exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, and it like very much feels that way when you watch this. As opposed to like when I when just when I watch other anime, it's like mm. like uh or even just like Ghost in the Shell or yeah. Akira or something like that. Like like those movies aren't pandering to somebody like me. Those movies are mm-hmm. like in a in like exist in a context, and they're just like this is the movie. This is the kind of movies we make. You definitely Where this is like yeah. this is like hey American, like yep. <laughs> do you like cartoons and pretty drawings and mm-hmm. you know uh, heavy handed allegory? Yep. Here you go. <laughs> I think a lot of the the Ghibli <laughs> stuff to that point has kind of worked itself into not really anime i guess in quotes mm. uh yeah. and it's worked itself at least in the american eye as adult disney movies i guess Ooh, more so that's a good point yeah because i feel like mm. you know growing up those movies were there was just something different about them you know it, it wasn't like oh it's like exactly what you're used to like hercules or any of the movies that we mentioned before but is cinderella is that a disney movie why did yeah. that come to mind is that yeah that is a disney they movie. had that 
they had yeah. that cinderella she loses yeah. her shoe cinderella that's yeah. the shoe yeah okay yeah. cool 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 but you, you know they're so confused <laughs> when trying to describe that movie to us like cinderella. which one had the shoe was she sleeping no a different one. No. Oh darn it why did she lose the shoe did she run did yeah. she go for a run what, what happened with that but anyway <laughs> she ran away from a prince <laughs> <laughs> was the prince a frog wrong movie um the, uh, no, she just had to get home. no he was a beast damn it wrong yeah, movie damn it wrong mo- so many princesses something like that I don't know. um but uh, but for princess mononoke it's it just i i i feel like the it being a ghibli movie kind of mm. gives you that context of like okay like it's not your typical disney movie but at the same time it is it feels like it is for a Western audience, weirdly enough, yes. especially the dubbed version. And yeah. sometimes with anime, you could tell how what their intended audience is based on the message of the film itself. Because sometimes anime likes to talk about exclusively Japanese issue. But when like the main theme of the movie is environmentalism, that's a much more global issue. So I feel like... But in is those that com- also like an anime... like? Because it's like the kind of the thing of like you, you see like Godzilla movies or something like that where it's like mm-hmm. there's always sort of this, this underlying theme of like nuclear war or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is anime similar in that uh, way? Of like, a, are there themes that they constantly come back to? Like oh, the, see, like, in anime in general, there's a lot of themes they come back to. Environmentalism, environmentalism isn't typically one of them from mm-hmm. as what I can remember. The Godzilla films in particular, I would say, are more like anti-war. In, right. uh, and anti-war is a very common uh, plot, uh, a very common uh, theme and plot device that gets featured in a lot of animes over the time. Oh yeah. Um, all, and recently, my favorite anime is because for uh, now, um, a lot of animes focus if they because some of them just don't have themes at all. Some of them, unfortunately, a lot of been, we've been watching recently has been made to make a quick yeah. dollar. But <laughs> yeah. But I a mean, lot of like... them. But at the same time, a lot of them were really kind of a. It feels like they're trying to encourage more artistic and personal freedoms in a kind of mm-hmm. contrast because Japan's such a collectivist society. Now, a, lo- a lot of times, their their heroes and media are people going above and beyond to accomplish their dreams, not the dreams that society has in place for them. So, to answer your question, oh. yeah, there's a ton of themes that anime loves to come back to, so, and there is an audience for it, especially um, in the West. I feel like a lot of people relate to it as kind of an empowerment angle where it's like i can you know because hmm. the typical the, the stereotype of an anime fan is someone in the dark surrounded by waifu pillows watching the latest re- re- latest release shaking and crying <laughs> saying that they can be the best in the world if they try hard enough it's a, ve- it's a very crude analogy like a very crude stereotype but it's only been right yeah. for a few years of my life so i'm a little attacked by that. <laughs> but it's it but it, it, i just loved um and me and bouncy just talked about a show recently that talked a few about a few non-japanese issues and I've always had this fascination with anime that delved into more global issues or more interpersonal issues that Japanese um, creators just don't normally think about because it's a little outside of their bubble. Hmm. And yeah, environmentalism like, for me was always a very tough. Um, I feel like it's actually one of the harder things to create stories about because maybe this is just me, but so many environmentalist films feel the f- films feel the goddamn same. Well, it, that's what I was going to say, yeah, too, because, I mean, I when I was watching this, like, even though I, this precedes a lot of things that have mm-hmm. this theme and uh, it, some, it sometimes doesn't precede a lot of things that have this theme. Like when I was watching this, I was like, OK, so this is just Dances with Wolves. This is just Avatar. This is just this, <laughs> that. There are just so many things that I'm like, oh, there's always this, you know, I've seen this plot before of like the, oh, they're going to the bad people, quote, are going to destroy the forest. Um, now we have to save nature and we have to, you know, make nature thrive. Uh, but I, I, what I thought was interesting about Mm -hmm. this one was kind of what we were talking about with the lady Oboshi angle that like, oh, like the bad guy has like another dimension that, you know, she needs to save these people and feed for her people too. So I I thought that's where this movie kind of achieved a little more, but I I did see exactly what you were saying, Rob, about just that theme. Like it's hard to make a movie about environmentalism and not be this you know exactly <laughs> it's very and hard not be, yeah. and not be the same film that unfortunately so many people have done before i'm like Ugh. yeah but i mean i guess like it is made in 1997 yeah and, like that is like prime time for environmentalism allegories that was a big and, time like, I'm, I, for some reason fern gully keeps coming to my head and i can't get it out of my oh, head oh yeah <laughs> totally. that was like right around the same time 
but it's like I, you know like um like while there are complex characters in this movie i think like overall it kind of just like i don't know to me it just like became really cheesy mm. at, at a certain point and mm-hmm. i think may- maybe it was because like i watched the dub version with all the stars in it mm. and the script of that is like not very good mm. um like it's very simplistic it depends uh, highly on the it's visuals, not very poetic sure. yeah mm-hmm. and and I, like while i love the visuals I felt like the world was very sort of like basic that they were yeah. creating where it was like, here's sort of, it's sort of like Lord of the Rings and also sort of like feudal Japan. Yeah. Kind of, but whatever here, to, let's go. You <laughs> See, know, like, I love <laughs> how you put that. Going. Just kind of whatever. They were just like, ah, yeah. you get it. <laughs> There's yeah. like a forest and he goes, it, like he goes in it and like, <laughs> Cause it's like there are, you know, there's like cool, cool parts to it. Cause it's like, you know, obviously here's like a badass dude with like a demon arm riding like yes. a stag, right. and like decapitating people with an arrow. And like to me, that's like very cool. That rings very anime to me. It's like very cool. It's yeah, like yeah. Um, fantastical, a little gory. Just like cool fighting, right. you know, <laughs> like that's how I think about anime a lot. It's like there's cool fighting and people have like cool outfits and weapons and right. things like that. And 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 like it definitely like scratched that itch, like all the old timey guns and like um, definitely like the 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 hunters and the boar skins at the end. Oh yeah, just that was like cool. very creepy and cool. Like that there's like a lot was, of I great did like that scene a lot visuals, but like ultimately it was like. I wanted, like, I wanted, wanted, like, almost less. You know what I mean? Like, mm. let's just, like, spend more time with, like, Lady Eboshi and, like, like, because it's, like, the, the, uh, um, I'm sorry, what's the main character's name again? Oh, Ashitaka. Yeah, so Ashitaka <laughs> is, like, not charming. He's, no. like, not charismatic. Nope. And, and, and like, if sure, he's, I guess he's handsome because we hear about how handsome he is constantly. True. It is true. But, like, why are these people like this dude rules like when they yes, meet exactly. him all the time and like to me that was like very confusing it's like wh- i think you would want somebody who is like at least a little funny i don't know or just <laughs> anything to or like charming yeah. because it's like these people meet him and they're just like yeah we're we're cool with you we like you so much and and to me it was like <laughs> maybe i want like a little less characters a little less plot so mm-hmm. we can just sort of like look at like mm-hmm. who Ashitaka is a little bit more of a character, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, hang out in the town a little more, like a little more downtime with like the 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 you know ex prostitutes and the yeah. you know, lepers, like like to I, me the, like, yeah. that was interesting, and they kind of like he just kind of like stopped there and was just like, all right, yeah. I'm out, peace, got to go find the forest, bored spirit. now, yeah. I yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree. I, I honestly when I was working my way through this movie, I got a text from Rob before we started because Rob just like just finished it before we started recording. And Mike, that's very much my MO. It's like, all right, yeah. we're recording it this time. <laughs> I got four hours a day beforehand. I'll knock out how how I Here got I know what to go. do for two of them. And Rob, you texted me something like perfect. He was like you said this movie moves like molasses. And I gotta it's say, weird. like, if they cut out like half an hour, it would be such a better movie. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That was my or, yeah, of the and film just like in spend time with the cool parts and less yeah. time with the dumb parts. With the kinda. dumb parts that don't matter. Yeah, yeah, that don't matter. It's just like I felt like some of that was just like a flex, where it's just like, well, I'm gonna make up this new thing and just show you it, it just because it's like, it's cool or whatever. Is it guys? Here's my really good idea. Yeah. Or also, did the animals not need to talk? No, the animals didn't. I mean, they didn't need to talk. It didn't like take it away from the movie, but it didn't like, do anything for. I was like, you, it's a wolf. I get it. Like, it's a boar. <laughs> yeah, it's. I understand what's happening, guys. You it don't have to, to. Um, it kind of worked for me a little bit. If if you kind of thought about it in the in the context of San trying to understand the environment around her, and then sure. Mm-hmm. But did they did they need to talk? No. I didn't um, hate it. It was like, but I just thought like, I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it's just a direction or something, but I just mm. thought like the voices sounded dumb when the animals talked. <laughs> where like, maybe it was just a direction thing where they could have just had better inflection or mm. like, cause it was just like when the wolf was talking, it was just like, 
the wolf was just like talking so fast and angry all the time. Yeah. It just like was making me laugh. Like, yeah, yeah, they went for very. Um, I know it's going to sound like a weird critique, but they went for very typically cartoony voices. They went for very yeah. kind of over the top for the animal creatures, while the right. all the human cast sounded a little subdued. So yeah. it was. So it felt like you were kind of cutting back into two different films here. You know, well, with one exception, Keith David can do anything. He is amazing. Right. <laughs> I, I wanted his voice just to be everything. <laughs> like, it's so good. He's like the narrator. He's like the yes. one boar. Oh, yeah. Who just like, and every time he talks, it's like, oh, yeah, he can just. He's talk. good. He's yeah. He's awesome. <laughs> he should have just done the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Every he's character. just got that voice. It's just mm-hmm. like, it's like uh, liquid gold, like those like Velveeta commercials. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like what his voice is like. It's just like rich and creamy audible like. chocolate just rich yeah. and creamy yeah. mm. Mm. put it on my mac and cheese put it on my noodles <laughs> but like claire danes like i don't know maybe that was just bad casting it was just like yeah so whiny uh, oh like i don't want to listen to this voice <laughs> like like i feel like vo- like like maybe some of the casting was just for like re- name recognition which is like you can't fault them for that but yeah but um some of it was maybe just like miscast because maybe you're trying to you should have cast people more for uh, their voice than yeah. Their I name. think the, the industry term for that is stunt casting, and that's kind of what some mm. of this felt like. You know, you didn't need these particular people in this film. It's it does seem like Michael, like what you were saying, you want these names on the credits more so than actually to be a character in your film, right? Yeah, you want well, like twenty yeah. Keith Davids. Yeah, want, just like <laughs> give us just all. Like, the even Minnie Driver had a great voice. Like gr- Minnie Driver, awesome voice, great. Yeah, like like. Any voice that it takes me a second to be like, oh, that's Mini Driver. I think you're doing a good job. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, you they, know. they needed to they needed to get in the Keith David laboratory and clone twenty more te- Keith Davids yeah. for this entire. Just mass produce them for the rest or of the like, production. Oh yeah. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton also like great casting. You know? Yeah, yeah, he was did good. really well. And I it took me a minute good. to realize that was Billy Bob. Then when he started mm-hmm. talking a little yeah. more, I'm like, wait a minute. Which he was a great character too. Like I just love like characters like that like uh i feel like that's a very maybe you know correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like that's that's sort of like an anime trope of sort of like these like roguish characters who kind mm-hmm. of like like to sow chaos into the the plot like yeah. he was definitely like the agent of chaos in the movie for sure um well because yeah. it's it's weird because it's like i feel like if i stop thinking about this movie so deeply mm-hmm. it's a good movie you know yeah <laughs> that's a fair point that's you know? a very good point. I never thought about it in that in that context, but you do bring up a good point there. Um, it's like Neil Young had a producer who was like, um, when they would go in the stu- studio, he would just be like, if you think, you stink. <laughs> Being like, if you think about the music you're making too much, you'll just make bad music. Right. And I feel like it's also like the other way around when you're sometimes consuming art. Like, if you think too much about this, you're going to hate this. Yeah. So just like, maybe stop thinking so much. <laughs> well, consider at the end of the day, yeah. remember what you're watching is a film meant to be enjoyed, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, I think that leads us to our last part of the discussion. I mean, considering the fact that we, we did think about it for 40 minutes, but um, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what what are, what are y'all's final thoughts on this movie? Like, I, I guess the I mean the question is like as we as we must like is it a bad movie? Is it bad? Does it suck now? Does it suck now? <laughs> is is this anime bad? Does it? Well, suck I now? guess I guess we can lead with that for you, Mike. First, can you give us the does it suck now? Does it suck now? So it's weird on on our episode. I did say that this movie sucks now, wow. and I think it was because I was tired when I watched it and like. <laughs> <laughs> the enjoyment I got out of it was a little minimal. Okay. But oh, as yeah. I've like sat with the movie longer, I think I've I've been able to bring out the good parts of it. Of, like things that I did enjoy, which is like obviously the artwork is incredible. It's just like beautiful. Mm. Um like a beautiful, yeah, weird Lord of the Rings feudal Japan world mm. that is just cool. There's just like a lot of cool elements to it. Um Oh, there was one thing I was thinking about, which was, um, I was sort of reading reading something online about how everything is a dystopia now, and there's not enough utopias, mm-hmm. and that the last real utopia was like Bill and Ted, 
like which wow. is like <laughs> you know over 30 years ago at this point so if you think of the world and bill and ted it's just like this beautiful future world where everybody loves each other and oh, plays yeah. rock and roll all day uh, that's right and it's like a beautiful thing to like look forward to and i'm thinking a little bit that this movie uh falls in that um mm. category of being a little bit of a utopia like imagining this world um of gods and humans existing together uh where if we can sort of like overcome this conflict, there's this utopia to be had. And I liked, you know, it, it was weird. Cause I think it took me a while to get there. Cause, mm. cause I think I, my initial thought was I'm annoyed by this movie. Like <laughs> stop beating me over the head with these like allegories and, and metaphors. Yes. But now like thinking about it, like, yeah, it's like kind of a hopeful movie in a good way. Like, uh, mm. like I, like, like if we can get our shit together, maybe we can have a utopia kind of thing. Like, so, so I'm kind of like maybe turning my opinion on the movie around. Mm. Yeah. Where I think it is, I think this movie is cheesy and a little dumb, but also <laughs> like there are, there's a lot to be enjoyed about it as well. Like it has a context and it has like a message that I support obviously. So mm. I think like there is like sort of a silver lining in the, in the cheesiness of this movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can completely agree with that sentiment. Uh, when it comes to the cheesiness, like I said, it sometimes ran um, in contrast to some of the visual, some of the actual plot that happened here. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes I felt a little totally confused, especially when a gory scene would happen. And then, but the thing is by the end of the movie, it felt like no characters of actual consequence died. It feels like everyone kind of got out just kind of scot-free, you know, Jigo and Iboshi. And it felt like everyone just kind of made it out okay. And, Mike, I have this problem sometimes when things just get a little too happy, I get a little <laughs> agitated. <laughs> it's been jokingly referred to That's as my fair. my misery index is what I've been yeah. calling it for a long time now. I'm like, you couldn't have killed off a few of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> a few people just couldn't have died. In my head, I'm thinking more of that... Um man needs to learn control type of at least one wolf could have died <laughs> at least Thank you. a wolf there's so <laughs> so many boars died can just one wolf <laughs> so many boars so, so many boars at i i was credit credit to this movie for making boars intimidating because Yo. <laughs> someone who grew up playing exclusively rpgs and killing probably thousands and thousands and thousands of boars yes. across several different video games yes good job for making me care about boars in this film oh my god the scene though when <laughs> the boars were like giving each other war paint with their snouts i started yeah. crying that you was mean, the funniest thing i've seen in the past two days and i boar paint <laughs> The boar. boar paint. <laughs> when when the boars, I really quick when, when there is a, a great line at one point, which like the boars, so they the humans like set up this big like ruse to lure the boars in, um, and it was they like lighting fires and stuff so that the boars would come attack them, and that's when they put on the war paint. And I remember the wolf, the wolf girl, and like the wolves be wolf girl being like, no. The, the boar shouldn't go like it's obviously a trap and the wolf girl the wolf just goes yeah they're just gonna do it they're boars <laughs> yes they're just dumb <laughs> oh i'm like okay they're just gonna do it you know yeah. they're just gonna go die boar's gonna bore boar's gonna bore boars before whores boars before whores wow um <laughs> But if if the, if, the, if the if the question we're rolling with right now um, does this suck now or is it bad in general, um, I definitely have some issues with the film. Um, the, like I said to Bouncy earlier, the pacing kind of felt a little off for me. Like mm -hmm. the parts of the film in like that middle hour kind of dragged for me. Yeah. So it did take away my enjoyment. However, in like the first thirty and last thirty minutes, there was enough. Uh, There's a lot of what I enjoyed. Some of it in a genuine fashion. Some it was probably a little ironic because of how over the top some of it was. But I cannot, for the life of me, call this a bad movie. I am glad that I watched it. Um, I don't know. Again, it's hard to talk about because of the context it came out. And I have to go back and look at 97 now, especially in the context, Mike, like you were saying about more environmentalist uh, f films and media at the yeah. time. It was very, I mean, I enjoyed it now. 
I'm thinking back, I look at all the awards I got, and I'm like, whoa, let's let's talk about this, Sailor. But <laughs> mm-hmm. I got to think in the context of 97 instead of 2023. So that's sure. on me. Yeah, and, like this is probably blowing minds in 97, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Probably, it's probably freaking people out in a very good way. Mm-hmm. So it, it did really well internationally as well from what I can read. Like it, it, it hit the international market maybe even a little harder than its native country. And that's always cool to see what resonates more in the Western market than in the homeland. So that was cool to see. And like I said, I'm definitely glad I watched this. This was, um, I, the things I enjoyed, I didn't expect to enjoy. And, um, like we talked about Iron Town, but I was thinking the same thing. If you gave me a movie about Iron Town, I would have been probably significantly happier. A hundred percent. I agree. I agree. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I want I, that Iron Town yeah. movie. I want that. I want that. I want that limited run hands. anime series about Iron Town. Just give me like a couple episodes with the with the dudes, a couple episodes of the lepers, a couple with the bro- with the girls who used to work in the brothels, and it would have been compelling. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Actually, that scene where he mm. goes to the town and he stops Claire Danes, the wolf girl, mm. from killing uh, Lady Eboshi, oh. that's a great scene. Yeah. That was really good. That's like one of the better scenes in the movie. Yeah, when he has and, like, the sword up and holding. He, yep. he's yeah. holding uh, and like the whole town up. is there and they're like, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> and like lifts, that, he lifts the that gate is with the, the tone. One hand. Yeah, oh, yeah. That sick. part is all great. And that's like the tone of the movie I want. Yes. But it just cannot hold it down, like, no. in that tone the whole yeah. time. Because yeah, like it's you, like, yeah. I don't know, the, like, the villagers are, like, cracking jokes, and it's, like, a little funny, but it's also, like, really cool, the way she's, like, running across the roofs, and yeah. and sort of, like, the way he, like, like falls off the roof, all, all of that. Like, she falls well, the off roof, the roof. Like, and, crumbling yeah. as they go. Like it's he, so cool. Like, hyper attention to detail there, which I loved. All I can yeah. think is, like, I need to play a video game right now. Yeah, so it reminded me of a few video games. I'm yes. like, this is what I need to do right now. It was like, it was so cool. That that scene in particular was fantastic. I I mean, you're hitting on something that I think is really important about this movie is that like there like lar- there were a lot of parts that dragged, but there were some glimmers of really nice stuff happening. Yes, but yeah. They but they couldn't exactly capitalize on it. I feel like there would always be like a scene with cool stuff, and then a scene with like really boring stuff, and then a scene with really boring stuff again, and then oh, that's cool. So I, I would kind of be going in and out of interests the entire time. To and, use another analogy, it yeah. feels kind of like an album with a few amazing songs and a few pieces of yeah, filler. It, it really does. feels like. One of those great yeah, like, yeah. 50 50 albums where it's like, mm-hmm. this song's amazing. Didn't need this one. What are we doing? Wow, right. that was great. Where right. are we? It's an album. That, it's a it's a decent album that could have been a really good EP. Yes. Mm. Uh, I'll compare it to the Rolling Stones, her Satanic Majesty's Request, where yeah. <laughs> there is about five songs that are like fucking burners, like amazing, mm. phenomenal songs. And then there's just like a bunch of weird. Stuff in between, yeah. where they're just like banging on pans and like yeah. I don't know, kicking a tambourine or <laughs> <laughs> falling in the studio out of chairs, and they're just recording it. And someone just someone just yeah. left the, the just left it the, the mic running in the studio <laughs> yeah. and said they're like ah just keep it. Just and it's know, like not it's not bad. Like I'll listen to the Rolling Stones do like whatever, but yeah. you know, uh, am I gonna listen to it twice? I don't know. That's a great yeah, question. Yeah, that's exactly. a great way to frame it. Yeah, I I mean I. I I also don't think it's like a bad movie, but um, I, I didn't particularly love it. I'm going to say that, but mm. it, it did. It was nice to look at, and I'm happy that I did watch it in uh, a time of my life when I was cognizant enough to understand what was going on. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I would ever need to watch it again. And if somebody suggested that we watch it, I would probably be like, I don't really want to, but like, if you really want me to watch it, I guess I will. That's the kind of mode I'm in. <laughs> if it's like your girlfriend being like, we yeah. need to watch this movie. It's my oh, favorite. It will not be her. She fell asleep when we were watching it. <laughs> <laughs> my wife also fell asleep. <laughs> I was texting my girlfriend while watching going like, all right, the middle half of this is losing me. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, "Sorry, I'm asleep. Uh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> like, you're not even here." It's like, wait a minute. How are you all so bored? <laughs> oh, but so I, I think our, yeah, our podcast, uh-huh. J Bone. This he suggested this movie because it's like one of his like top ten favorite movies of all time. Really? Hmm. Yeah. And he in wow. in his um maybe I'll get him to record a comment. But like his, in oh, please his do. defense. 
uh, of this movie, and I'm sure you hear the episode too, is that there's just so much attention to detail, and that's what he likes in it. So mm-hmm. um, I'm blanking on examples, but basically his point was uh, all of this world is sort of like very well thought out and fleshed out for him. Okay. And he just loves existing in it for sure. like, whatever, two hours in the movie. Okay. And, um, you know, everything from down from the way, like the, the spirit of the forest is like this big blobby guy and into like, <laughs> you know, it's sort of like turns into this. Uh, like weird Mountain buck. Dew Baja yeah. Blast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he goes from Baja and, Blast to just a buck. A buck, yeah. Um, where he felt like, and you know, I, I think I agree with him to an extent of like, there are parts of this that just feel very like, very lived in. Mm-hmm. Um, especially mm-hmm. when he goes to the forest and you see the way everything just like yeah. functions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it what, is beautiful. That's a fair point. Yeah, it is yeah. beautiful. And I think that, that may be my, my favorite thing about it is that it was exciting like as a world to potentially see yourself in it was really cool and like almost immersive it did excel excel in world building yeah Mm -hmm. i will give the film definitely some credit there they did a great job it's just everything else that (laughs) was like lukewarm on i think (laughs) it's just cheesy like cheesy there's no other it's corny there's no it's it's a corny little world but again like we all mentioned a few times now if they just focused a little more on the characters and made this a little more character driven it would have hooked me like yeah. if we got to know any of the brothel girls and you yeah. know a little, a little more time with our main, just to like make, give him a second dimension, not even like you know because he he had one, and it was so um, almost grating sometimes as a viewer. But I, if we had some more character, it was a more character driven um, experience. I think I would have been more invested in the actual world that we got to experience. Mm-hmm. I think it's fascinating that all three of us came to pretty much the same conclusion here. <laughs> Yeah, we're. He's I think we're pretty. We that wasn't to go on our takes. <laughs> I mean, like uh, Ashitaka could have made like one joke. Like, wh- like yeah. what's his deal, dude? If he could, like, if he had a, if he had a quirk, <laughs> or if he was like a little quieter, because I've seen a particularly yeah. in anime when you when you have a character who's kind of quiet for most of the time, where you don't really know what he's thinking. He doesn't always have to be dark and brooding, but in that context, he usually is. You know, right. with little, so I think I just needed him to either talk a lot more or a lot less, but I needed the extreme. Right it, now, it, he was just too yeah. one-dimensional for me to give a damn. It reads as if this went out, and the second that they sent it out to all the developers, to all like the publishers for like the final, final pass of it, the director looked at himself and was like, "Oh no, I forgot to give him a personality." <laughs> like, oh, it'll be fine. It's pretty enough. Ah, uh, it looks. Or good. like maybe he's supposed to be like the like he's supposed to be the audience in a, a little way too I that's guess. a very like, big you anime, know i don't anime know thing. that's he a very big also, anime thing and he is every, also yeah. very in line with like anime protagonists like a lot that we've seen like he's Rob. us he's like uh and he like he's us but he's also explaining the plot to us where it's like you yeah. can't kill the spirit of the forest that's bad and we're like oh well you shouldn't do that this is bad oh, i guess that's bad <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of feels like a self-insert when you put it in that frame yeah very yeah. Bella from Twilight. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah. no. Vampires and werewolves. Oh, and they're no. all hot. Uh. Yeah. It's like werewolves. Werewolves are hairy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Damn. yeah. Werewolves are hairy. I yeah. guess they are. Yeah. yeah. Werewolves are bears? What? What? I would not have known that as the audience here. Thank you for... I would not have drawn that c- conclusion myself. I need yes. to be... My hand vampires... needs to firmly hold. Vampires are smooth. <laughs> Hairless and smooth. <laughs> and Irish? <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, and severely man. lacking in vitamin D. Severely. Oh, God. Are they ever? Jeez. Um, but thanks, guys. I think this was a fun time. <laughs> That's a great time. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. I had a blast. Oh, did you Zoom freeze or something? Oh, it looks pretty frozen. <laughs> Oh, it looks a little frozen, yeah. Of course, like leave it to the last one minute of this. Leave it to the last thing. second to lose him. Oh to no! Freeze. This is, I just this see is. like I just see I, I just see him. I, I'm like, oh yeah, thanks, man. And you're like, oh thanks, Mike. And Mike's just staring into the abyss. <laughs> oh, is he back? He's back. back. <laughs> yes, back. he's I'm back. back. Yeah. I, nice. I don't Mike, know. We yeah, I was jo- like, <laughs> you were joking about me freezing. Yes. Yeah. I didn't hear yeah, any of it. I yeah, we were just saying really how funny. appropriate as we're as we're doing our exit for your for your monitor to freeze. Like, all right, 
<laughs> Couldn't have been more. I was trying fitting. to do like a jump freeze, like at yeah. the end of uh, Breakfast Club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't you forget about me? <laughs> don't, you, don't, don't kill that forest spirit. <laughs> don't you kill the forest spirit? That's definitely bad. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> Well, I guess we can agree that this movie wasn't bad, but killing no. the forest spirit is bad. We shouldn't kill the forest. Don't do that. Don't, Don't do it. You hear that, kids? Don't kill the forest. Plant some seeds. Yeah. Or the forest spirit's goop will get on you and kill you. <laughs> and no one wants strange goop on them. It's true. Especially when it's blue. Huge theme in anime. Blue? Goop. <laughs> <laughs> thanks again mike for hanging out with us Thank today you, mike. yes and, uh, we'll be seeing fun. you back here i'm sure <laughs> of course i'll come back i'll watch whatever if you have an anime movie you want me to watch uh I, you I want already an outsider's have some opinion ideas. <laughs> we could also I continue with our ghibli trend potentially continue yeah i'll watch ghibli. some other ghibli movies Get ghibli or throw you into the deep end hard it's like hey i know you're an <laughs> anime tourist but um here's a condo <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm actually i'm fine with whatever sounds good uh, to us. i watch cool. a lot of movies and i work in film so i'm always like it's hard to throw something at me unless it's just like you send me some like straight up hentai <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well we're gonna take you a few steps back from there to start with <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well uh yeah thanks y'all we'll uh we'll catch you next time mike thanks for being here it's bad Wow, oh my god, what a rousing podcast of anime conversation. Am I right, my compares? Am I right, my weebdom? Anywho, uh, yeah, you can send us a message if you want. Did you like this podcast? Did you hate this podcast? Do you want to kill me? Do you want to drench me in Calaxisaur blood and watch me drink it? That's fine. Just send us an email at badanimepod at gmail.com or DM us on our Instagram at badanimepod, all one word. You can also find us on YouTube as badanime, and you can leave a comment on whatever video you want to leave a comment on we'll read them all anyways we don't care i love you kiss kiss simple equations podcast network